Patris, could you tell us about this campaign, which you said uh, involved a very few people but had a very big impact? Oh, that is, uh, you're talking about the campaign in the Netherlands to abolish voting computers? Yeah. It happened uh, two years ago, and uh, uh, the Netherlands by that time had uh, gone to complete uh, computerizing, uh, computerized voting. That means that people yeah. were going to the uh, uh, polling stations and were voting uh, by way of a computer, yeah. uh, voting computer. Yeah. Uh, and, um, then a committee came up. You must know that uh, Amsterdam was the last big, big city to switch over from uh, paper ballot to uh, computerized uh, voting. So what's the problem with this? Uh, and, uh, well, the problem is that you cannot control exactly what's happening with the computer. In the olden days with paper ballots, you could always recount, you could look uh, the uh, election, uh, election officials in a polling station, they yeah. had a real work to do, they were doing a work that was entrusted to them to count yeah. fairly yeah. old ballot papers and so, and uh, now this had disappeared and people could not control anymore, you had to be, you had to have faith in the machine and the people who had made the computers. Yeah. And the people who had taken the decision to implement these computers. Right. And uh, a committee was very much against that, said that uh, uh, computers cannot replace uh, human agency. Okay. And so this, uh, committee came, this committee was made up of hackers, by the way. So the how did the campaign go, yeah? Excuse me? How did the campaign go? Well, the campaign followed the classic Mahatma Gandhi model, meaning yeah. uh, first they ignore you, then they make you ridiculous, then they fight you in earnest, and then you win. <laughs> And that's exactly what happened to us. So it was a small group to start with? Uh, it was a very small group. It was 15 people uh, around Rob Ronchai. Around? around Rob Ronchai, who is the okay. informal leader of the Dutch hackers movement, if okay. there is such a thing. And uh, uh, these people, uh, uh, well, worked basically against all odds. I but see. they had a lot of, uh, of imagination and also they had a lot of resources. So the debate has spread beyond Holland today? Uh, the people? debate has spread very much beyond Holland because uh, 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 our campaign was joined by the Germans of the Chaos Computer Club and yeah. there was a lot of interest from France and from Belgium and uh, it spread out. Uh, in the United States there was already a very, uh, a very active movement against voting computers. And that was uh, quite normal because in the United States also these voting computers are made by, uh, uh, f by firms which have strong yeah. link with one political party or the other, usually the Republicans. Um, so for instance, it's suspected that the election of, uh, the first election of, uh, of uh, George Bush, uh, uh, W. Bush, was uh, uh, happened among other things by some kind of uh, uh, some kind of manipulations. Yeah, so in the United States it's very alive yeah. and you could say that world over voting computers are on their way out I such see. as they exist now. I see. They can be replaced by uh, machines doing the voting yeah. as long as there is what we call a paper, paper, trail. Trail. paper trail. So that is essential. Patrice, yeah, sorry. Our common friend uh, uh, Arun Mehta yeah, Arun what, what role did he play in this? Uh, uh, India was one of the first countries which uh, started in earnest to uh, go for electronic voting. And Aoud Meta immediately had a lot of criticism of it, so he's probably one of the first people in the world to have uh, voiced criticism of uh, voting computers. If I remember right, the issue was that the software was not auditable and it was closed. Exactly, exactly. It's all closed. It's, uh, it's a proprietary software. So you do not know who, uh, how a software is made, you do not know who, is, who has access to the software, yeah. you do not know how the counting is, counting is done and so And really you have to trust, you have to trust both the computers and the people who have made them and, and the decision makers. But from what I understand, the Indian uh, computing machines are not really computers, they are just electronic voting machines. Well, that is uh, 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 the distinction between machines and computers. It's a bit, uh, it's a bit uh, 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 fluid, but let's say a computer is something with a piece of software, yeah. and that software has to be has to be written and, and, and implemented before the the computers work. So in the case of the Dutch compu voting computers, the manufacturer actually always maintained there were mere machines. But we proved that we could adapt the software to make it play chess I or see. vote for completely different parties I than see. you thought. So they are really computers. You have proved this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have proven that. Yeah, yeah. What's the? You, we were discussing yesterday about how computerization of or electronic voting would affect countries differently. Say Holland versus India. What's your take yeah, on well, that? Yeah, well, in in the Indian setting, 
voting computer cells that are used in India, we accept as a lesser, lesser evil. Yeah. Because in India, at the local level, elections are rigged to such an extent that this is surrealistic, often. Not always, yeah. but uh, you hear about uh, ballot box stuffing, yeah. about voters being traditional intimidated, voting, yeah, yeah. And, and all. So the traditional voting method in India is, is fairly corrupt. Yeah. In that case, uh, if you have a very, very integral uh, election commission, and you have uh, strict control of the yeah. uh, uh, voting computers, then it would be a lesser evil. On the other hand, in the Netherlands, this, this, uh, these problems did not arise. Yeah. There, had, there has never been a fraud in, with uh, uh, old-style voting. Old -style voting. <laughs> now, the interesting thing is that as soon as I introduced uh, 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 voting computers, yeah. first case of fairly massive, so completely stupid, and I therefore see. very easily traceable fraud happened. Yeah, I see. And the other point is that also in India the electoral system is federal and uh, maybe the malpractices happen at the local level. So it would be more difficult to, to reach. Would you agree with that? Well, I mean, I, 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 don't know, I don't know the Indian system in detail. But uh, uh, let us say that, uh, that uh, the tendency to rig elections at the local level... You see, uh, if you want to rig elections, you have to do it on a large scale. Yeah. Because there are many, many, many polling stations. Yeah. And because of this large scale, that was one of the arguments for both the government and the computer manufacturer to say that their computers were perfectly safe, since you had to rig so many of them in order to achieve a different result. Yeah. Uh, uh, in India, it's happening at such a scale that it is indeed, indeed the case that rigging will happen. So, uh, uh, obviously the case between India and the Netherlands is different. I didn't follow. Rigging would happen? Well, rigging would happen because it would indeed happen at very large scale. Okay. Because basically, yeah. uh, uh, maybe not all, but the large... I, I tend to say that uh, a majority of the local authorities are corrupt, prone to rig elections. But you, ha you have a little bit of a safety by way of diversity, no? in the sense that parties change every few, few kilometers. Exactly, exactly. In and in fact, in fact, rigging does not happen in India to such a scale. But then it's, it's, it's a chicken or egg question. Does rigging not happen in India anymore because of the voting computers? No. Or does, has it never really happened to a large extent? I mean, at, at a certain level, you cannot change if there is a real... In India, what you see... There's another difference between India and the Netherlands. In, in, in India, you have fairly clear-cut choice yeah. between one set of government and the other. Yeah. Say, basically, Congress party and other parties. Yeah. In Holland, there are so many parties and it's so many coalitions that uh, 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 the choice is much more subtle. And the shifts are also uh, much smaller than in India. In, so, in India, if there is... Uh, Profound movement to change government. Yeah. You cannot rig it to such an extent that this will not happen. I see. In Holland, for instance, in Holland, on country, it's you can tweak elections by just tweaking them by one one percent. You already achieve a very substantial result because that will change the chance of a certain coalition forming as uh, opposed to another. The coalition of uh, of uh, government in Holland is formed basically on a majority which can can be only one or two percent of the electorate. I see. Thanks so much for your time. That was very insightful.